present the fifth episode in the Green Valley Line, the story of a backcountry railroad in the early years of the 20th century. Preparations for the trial mail run, in which the Green Valley Line is to compete with the CK and W for the mail contract, are just about complete. In spite of its shorter line, the odds are against the Green Valley. All over the West, sympathy is on the side of the little railroad. Bill Reed is out to win against his father's company. The old 1010 is out of the shops, all tuned up for action, and is just returning from a trial run over the West End. The scene opens in the engine cab where we find our friends Mickey Donegan, Spider McGee, and Bill Reed. All right, Mickey, you can take it easy in the town. Gosh, I never thought this old mill could make that time. Hey, what did I tell you? What do you make? The average running time, Mr. Reed? Better than 40 on the outward run, and close to 44 so far coming back. Hey, what did I tell you? Didn't I say she could do it? And we ain't really opened her up yet. What do you think of her, Mickey? Well, she's just as good as ever. Them side rods is working pretty stiff, and the eccentric straps are sliding up a little. But she's doing fine. If we send her out on that pilot run tomorrow, do you think she can keep ahead of the mail special, Mickey? Without an accident, I'm sure of it, sir. What do you say, Spider? Uh, don't you worry about keeping ahead as far as running goes. As long as you lay, don't lay us out with this bunk dispatching. Uh, I'll see to that. Say, what about that fellow who was snooping around the office last night? You suppose you heard what you was planning? You mean about running the 1010 ahead of the pilot? Sure. I don't know, Spider. I hope so. If it was somebody spying for the opposition... What do you mean? You, you wanted it to be her? Sure. Never mind why now. You'll find out later. Well, suffer feet. I don't get you. Wish thou spider. Quit your blathering and watch out for that yard signal. Okay, Mickey. There goes the forward. Keep her a-going. And say... Don't forget you got to meet number 10, Mickey. She'll be in in about eight minutes. Sure I not forget. I'll be dropping off with Mr. Reed when we head into the alley. You can take it into the shops and tell him to loosen up that key on that left side rod. Okay, Mickey. Oh, what's doing, Mickey? Friends coming on number 10? I'm expecting a young girl from the old country, Mrs. DeBridge's daughter. Oh, is that so? She's coming here on a visit? <laughs> Big God, she's coming to live here. Maggie Flint at the Green Valley Restaurant has given her a job. Fine. Hope she likes it here, Mickey. I hope so. Oh, hello there, Mickey. My goodness, I was afraid you wouldn't be able to make it. Well, well, now, Maggie, and it's all dressed up your hair. Sure, it was good of you to come. Oh, that's nothing. Do you know this girl when you see her? Well, be dad, and how should I... When I left the old country, she was buried to height of me knee. For land's sakes, how are you going to pick her out? Hold on now. I have the description. Yes? About five foot three in height. Yes? Slim built. Yes? With dark hair and blue eyes. Yes? With a black dress on and a green feather in her hat. Uh-huh. Uh, we'll be spotting her all right. There's number ten now coming down the hill. My goodness, you're all excited, Mickey. Sure, it's the first one of me own people I've seen for many and many a day. Well... Do you see her, Mickey? Give her a sign. I wonder if she's coming by another train. Maybe so. Everybody's off already. Hold on! What is it? You got it yourself now. Oh. You see the little girl over yonder packing the old green yes. carpet bag. Yes. Hello there, young lady. Would your name be Sheila McGuire now? Sure, that's me name. And you'll be me Uncle Mickey. That's right. Well, well, now it's fine to be seeing you, Sheila, darling. Shake hands with Mrs. Flint here. She's after coming to meet you. Hello there, honey. My goodness, I'm mighty glad to see you. Catch hold of that grip, Mickey. And how's your mother, Sheila? Sure, she do be well in bed. Gracious, you must be awful tired after the long journey. But I'm not tired at all. Sure, I haven't done a bit of work since I did be leaving Glenlaw. Only I did be frightened to death over the steamers and the big trains and all. Well, well, now, sure, you're the lemonade of your mother when she was a girl. Where do we be going, Uncle Mickey? We're going just across the street to the restaurant. It's only a little way. Then I'll be leaving you. Mind your step now. Goodbye, Sheila, darling. I'll see you later.
Say, Pop, you ought to have seen that old 1010 fly on the West End. You know the time she made? Sure, I was listening to the reports. She was sure traveling, Bill. Why, what's wrong, Pop? Anything the matter? No, I don't know. John Green's coming right over. Oh? Yeah, he wants to talk to us both. Say, you you don't think he's going to try to interfere with that mail run, do you? I can't say. He's standing in with your father in the CKW. I guess he's strong for us getting that mail contract. Well, he can't stop us, Pop. You you don't have to tell him our plans, do you? Well, I don't know. He's the president of the road, Bill. Oh, gosh, yes, but the directors are all behind us. And they know he's favoring the CKW. I don't see what he can do. Say, you don't think he'd pull anything crooked, do you? Oh, not a chance, son. John Graham Square. It's just that he doesn't believe we can pull the mm-hmm. Green Valley out of the hole. And he's in favor of giving in. Yes, I see. Well, what advantage would it be to him? Why, John Graham would be well looked after, I guess. Be able to retire comfortably. Ah. Well, it's quite a mix-up, all right. Anyway, here comes Mr. Graham. Oh, uh, morning, John. Morning, Henry. How are you, young fellow? Just fine, Mr. Graham. Won't you sit down? Uh, thanks. Well, what's on your mind, John? Oh, I just want to have a word with you and Reed here. It's about this mail contract idea. Oh, yeah? Yes. Don't you think you're going at this thing a little hastily, Henry? Oh, shucks. Why, we've been trying for the last 15 years to get a chance at it, John. Yes, yes, of course. But the way things are, why, you're going to antagonize J.J. Reed more than ever. And we're in a mighty bad position. Well, no good going over that again, as far as I can see, John, unless you've got something to propose. Now that's the point. I had a letter from Mr. Reed today. And if we could abandon the idea for this mail contract, I think you'd find him very reasonable. Well, I reckon it's too late to think of that now. Mm, How about you, Reed? Hmm? It's all very well to get enthusiastic about putting the Green Valley Road on its feet, but... But, uh, But what, Mr. Graham? Why, don't you see? Here you are fighting against your own father. Unnatural, I call it. Is that so? Let me tell you something. I've worked for my father ever since I was a kid. Whatever I got for it, I've earned ten times over. He never gave me anything, not even a college education. I had to pay for that out of my own savings. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was the best thing that could have happened. Maybe it was. But it means that nobody has any strings on me. Father's made a pile of money by doing just what he's trying to do with the Green Valley. Getting hold of mortgages, then freezing out the stockholders and grabbing the property. Mm, But that's nothing new. It's being done every day. Sure it is, I know it. But it's not going to happen to the Green Valley if I can help it. But you haven't a chance. Oh? Why, even if you did get this mail contract, we've only 90 days to meet the interest on our mortgages. Mm. 150,000. Well, there's not a bank in the country that would lend us a dollar. I know all about that, Mr. Graham. What do you say, Harkness? Uh, Can't you use a little sense before it's too late? Well, what's the proposition, John? Why, Reed is willing to reopen the deal to buy the Green Valley. He'll make us a little better offer. It would mean a more substantial cash allowance for you and me and the other directors. Well, hold on there now. Taint a bit of you. It's going into that, John, and you ought to know it. Well, I... I wish you luck with the venture, Henry, but it's a pretty hard road you're traveling. Maybe you're right, Mr. Graham, but we're going to give it a whirl. We might surprise you yet. Mm, I hope so, young fellow. And now there's another matter. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Graham and I have been expecting to see you before this up at the house. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I've been intending to call, but it's been quite a rush lately. Well, uh, what about dinner tonight? Why, really, you see, we've got the trial run on tomorrow morning, and things are kind of busy. Oh, shucks now, Bill. You better go along. Everything's ready, and I'll tend to the work here. Well... All right, Mr. Graham, tonight, then. Well, that's fine. Uh, Seven o'clock, then. All right. Oh, quite informal. Just uh, Mrs. Graham and uh, my daughter, Carrie. Oh, uh, yes. All right. Uh, Seven o'clock, then, sir. Mm, Good. Uh, So long, Henry. Uh, So long, John. So that's that. Well, I forgot about that fire-eating daughter. I suppose we'll have another run-in tonight. Ah, say, listen here, young fellow. You got the wrong idea about Carrie Graham. There isn't a finer gal in the whole country. <laughs> the pride of the old Green Valley, eh, Pop? I will say she's not hard to look at. If only she hadn't such a mean tongue. Uh, you're all wrong now, Bill. There's nothing mean about young Carrie. She sure hopped onto me the first time we met. Made me feel like 30 cents. All right, I've got something more important to think about just now. I guess we're, we're all set for tomorrow, eh, Pop? Sure, as far as we can be. I hate to leave things tonight, but... Well, I'll get away from the Grahams as soon as I can. The engines are all ready, huh? I'll ride with Spider and Mickey on the 1010. Not that I can do any good if anything breaks loose, but I'd like to be along. Suit yourself, son. I think I'll slide over to the hotel and change. Well, Pop, tomorrow we'll know the answer. Either we'll have landed that mail contract or... Uh, sure. 
That's right. Tomorrow we'll know. Well, don't worry, Pop. We'll make it. See you later. And now, William, my boy, if you'll excuse me, I'll have to leave you and Carrie to entertain yourselves. I have some letters to get off, and Mrs. Graham retires very early. Well, that's all right, Mr. Graham. I'll have to be getting back to the office anyhow. Oh, don't hurry away. Good night, Carrie. Good night, Father. Good night, William. Good night, sir. Aha! Alone at last, as they say in the storybooks. Oh, please don't try to be funny on my account. You know, you've improved quite a lot since the day I first met you. You are almost friendly. Oh, one has to be polite to guess. Oh? In the railroad business, we entertain all kinds of people. <laughs> well, that's one to you. So you've still got me sized up as the villain of the piece, huh? I don't know. You're rather a puzzle to me. Not that it matters much. Oh, no. No, of course not. Personally, I think you're bluffing. I've got an idea that under that cold exterior burns a warm and kindly nature. Really? Well, don't jump to conclusions. Oh, let's stop fencing with each other. How are chances for the mail run tomorrow? Just fine. Everything's all set. The boys are on their toes. Tomorrow, my dear Miss Graham, will be a red-letter day in the history of the Green Valley Line. And all through the amazing genius of Mr. William Reed. Sure, you got it. However did you get oh, it? Oh, you make me tired. Oh, listen, listen. I've got a favor to ask you. What? Oh, don't look so surprised. It's only a small matter. I'm going out on the West End run tomorrow with a pilot engine. Pop Harkness will be all alone at the office, and... Well, Pop gets mighty anxious about this mail run. But what do you want me to do? Why, it's this. For some unknown reason, Pop thinks an awful lot of you. Oh, well. And if you'd go down to the office and sit with him while the reports are coming in in the mail special, I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Well, of course I will. Thanks. I'd do anything for Pop Harkness, and I know how he feels. Tell him I'll be there. Right. Thanks very much. Now I, I've got to go. Miss Graham, I must thank you for a very delightful evening. Oh, don't mention it, Mr. Reed. Now, the next thing you say is... I hope you'll come again sometime. I'm not going to say any such thing. That's all right. I'm coming anyway. Good night. Good night. All set for the big mail run. All along the old Green Valley, the men are on their toes, out to win against the big opposition road. Don't miss episode six of The Green Valley Line. 